author Justin Jobel, in his book, Writing for Computer Science, explains to us about how to improve our writing skills. Chapter 6 did cover about certain styles, which is titled as Good Style. Now in Chapter 7, the author talks about style specifics. Here in this chapter, he says the reason he is quoting here is, if you have written something very unclear, it will be very difficult for anybody to understand. You have to make things clear so people can understand what you are writing. So what are the areas you should concentrate? Good style is all about writing things clearly so that it becomes easy to understand, easy to read. Here he is providing set of rules, but these are not arbitrary rules. These are rules which come from experienced writers. These are those which experienced writers do follow. And they are applied in different areas or different topics or subtopics per se. Things like titles, title headings, paragraph, padding, and so on and so forth. So we will go through each one of them with some examples in these slides here. Let's talk about a title and the headings inside a paper or a report or any of those documents. A title should be concise in nature. It should be very clear. It should be informative. But it need not be a complete sentence. For example, if I say a new signature file scheme based on multiple block descriptor files for indexing very large databases. This looks like a complete sentence, but you don't need to write in full detail like this. Instead, you can say signature file indexes based on multiple block descriptor files. This is clear. Similarly, you don't need to say an investigation of the effectiveness of extension to standard ranking techniques for large text collections. Instead, you can say extensions to ranking techniques for large text collections. The word investigation here. What do you want to emphasize by saying investigation? Are you going to do something else other than investigating, other than looking at it, other than doing research on it? So you don't need to write these things inside a title. Similarly, a title should not be too long or too short. For example, if someone says Huffman coding for databases, this is very broad. There are a lot of things involved, so you are not specific to your problem or specific to what you are doing. Your contribution is not clear. Limited memory Huffman coding for databases of textual and numerical data. This is slightly longer, but it's better than the very short version Huffman coding for databases. And remember, a title should be as accurate as possible. Should be accurate, not just catchy, not just looking nice. Because people look at the title, a reader looks at the title and decides whether the paper is useful for him or not. So a title is more towards contribution than the scope or the outcome of your research. You should not have like in a title towards something. You don't need to say towards something. You don't need to start the title with the word towards. And you don't need to be complete sentences. Here is another example. Duplication of data leads to reduction in network traffic. This leads to, you can say, duplication of data to reduce. Your aim or your contribution is to reduce. And when you write section headings, so title is clear. When you write section headings, make sure the headings are appropriate to the main heading you are using. If under a title of lists and trees, under a heading of lists and trees, if you should have only subheading as lists or trees, not something as other structure, because you said you're going to discuss only lists and trees. You cannot add something else. If your heading is index organizations, then internally you can say B3. You don't need to say B3 indexes. Why? Because your main heading already says it is index organization. Don't create too many subsections or sub-subsections. Make sure in a page you have like three headings, nothing more, okay? And don't go too many subheadings. It will be very difficult for the reader to follow through. If you have a heading inside a subsection, it is better to have the text along with the heading itself. It could be good to be in line, 
not to have like heading separately in a line and followed by next line with a paragraph or sentence. And numbering, don't go multiple numbers. Also, don't mix too many font size and, you know, make it messy. Let's talk about a starting paragraph. Remember, it is very important because this is the paragraph that will create attention to your paper. It should be very clear. It is, it is something that is setting forth what you are going to say. And remember, an abstract should have no unnecessary words. Everything should be precise and clear for the reader to be motivated. For example, if I say trees, especially binary trees, are often applied. Indeed, discriminately applied to management of dis dictionaries. Here, it is like a sentence, but it is not motivating anything. But instead, you can say dictionaries are often managed by a data structure, such as a tree. However, trees are not necessarily the best choice. Necessarily, the best choice for this application. So now you are saying, okay, there is something else that could be a better choice. This paper does not describe a general algorithm for transaction. Okay, if you are not saying it is not describing a general algorithm, what are you describing there? So be clear. And what is the problem with the general algorithm? So here you can write it like general algorithm, general purpose transaction algorithms, guarantee freedom from deadlock, but can be inefficient. So in this paper I do this. You have to write something clear. An opening sentence need not be clearly technical. Okay. Because you will explain the technical details of your algorithm in the following sections. So you will indicate what is done and not how you are doing it. And don't start your abstract or your introduction by saying this paper is all about, in this paper, this paper concerns. Don't write like this. Because it is about this paper you are writing, you don't need to say in this paper. In this paper we describe a new programming language. You don't need to use the word in this paper. You can simply say, most numerical computation is dedicated to so-and-so, right? But matrix operations are difficult to implement. So I'm clearly saying what is a problem. And then I'm saying in this paper what I do. So don't start with a statement saying, this paper concerns or in this paper. And please note, you should really start your sentence, okay, which is clear and which is important for people to understand. Don't say like, this topic is very important. It is important. You cannot say like this. Because if it is not important, do somebody do research on an area which is not important. Everybody works on things which are important. Right? And don't write like use of digital library is increasingly common. This is like a very commonly known knowledge. You don't say this. And don't make assertions, okay, that some people might not agree. For example, if you say it is important that the cost of this structure be reduced to bar in query processing. You might say this, but some people might say, no, it is not reduced. So don't make assertions as well. Making simpler statements is always better, right? By saying digital libraries provide fast access to large number of documents. Query processing can involve many disk access. And clearly indicate, okay, what is that you are going to do? For example, if I write underutilization of main memory, impairs the performance of operating system. So what, what do I do? So here you can write like operating systems are traditionally designed to use least amount of memory. But such design, they impair their performance. So I have to solve it. How to solve will follow. Right? And write like this. Many user interfaces are confusing and poorly arranged. We demonstrate that interfaces are superior if developed according to certain principles. Instead of writing like many user interfaces are confusing, poorly arranged, so you can write it better. Interfaces are superior if developed according to rigorous principles. In, the, in this one, you are saying interfaces are superior, but in the second one, the modified one, the right one, we say we demonstrate. So you are saying I'm doing it. In this paper, we are doing this. Abstract has to be very good because it is what people will read, try to understand your paper. It books, it should clarify what is your contribution. Please note, introduction is not something that follows abstract. So if I remove abstract from your paper, your paper should still be complete. You cannot expect somebody should read abstract before reading the introduction. Okay? You cannot, you should not have a flow like this. 
And when you write sentences, sometimes it's fine to be varying your sentence type. You don't need to write system of rational numbers is incomplete. This was discovered by so discovered 2000 years ago. The problem arises. Instead, you can write differently. The Greeks discovered 2000 years ago that the system of rational numbers is incomplete. Problem is that some quantities such as this are irrational. This discovery was a serious blow. So if you look at the last sentence between the two types are similar. But the way it motivates is different. Because the way you put in, the way you arrange, motivates the reader. Any paragraph should concentrate on a single topic and it should be able to follow through and it should also be linking to the previous ones. It should have a link. Right? The last sentence of a paragraph is expected to have higher impact in the body. So it should be a critical sentence or it should be something, a strong statement. If you have very long statements, long sentences, please break them into small sections small sentences so people can follow and paragraphs should be linked from one paragraph to another. For example, if you say like uh, in the one paragraph you say this algorithm, instead of saying this algorithm in a new paragraph you can say the fast sorting algorithm. This fast sorting algorithm is described in a previous paragraph. You can also have listed paragraph points one, two, three like this. You can put points. If you put points, it will be more clear. It is like giving emphasis. Okay, you can say, I can refer to a point, point number one, point number two. I can number them, I can tag them, or I can name them, whatever. But the problem is, putting lots of numbering, one, two, three, means you are emphasizing too much. So if it is a trivial contribution or trivial work, don't put it as points. Don't write them as points. Ambiguity. So, under the title of ambiguity, there are lots of examples here. Let's look some of these examples. The compiler did not accept the program. What do you mean by did not accept the program? Means what? The program did not compile. This is much clearer. Don't use phrases like when using. You can just remove them and rephrase the sentence slightly. That is a new version of the operating system. So, when using the fetch utility. Instead, you can say, so the fetch utility. Uh, it leaves error messages can be ignored. So you don't need to say when using. Also, if you use the pronouns like it, this, they, make clear what are they referring to. It should be clear. For example, the next stage was a test of the complete system, but it failed. Which failed? Stage 5 or the system failed? In addition to skip list, we have tried this. Skip lists are superior. Instead, if you say they are superior, which one? Skip list or the tree? So be clear, the machine crashed and it was necessary to reboot. So you can write the machine crashed and had to be rebooted. So these pronouns should indicate what they are referring to. These kind of pronouns like it, this, they, they can mislead uh, reading the sentences. When it was first developed, what is this it meaning? So for the word when recursive compilation was first developed. Then you say it was. So here this it refers to recursive compilation. And sometimes people or the readers get confused when you use the word speed, time, okay, these words. So be clear to say, what do you mean by increasing in speed, increasing in time? Be clear, because speed and time have relation. Increase in one decreases the other. How about sentences like, uh, when you create sentence structure, be clear to have something very simple, clear, and brief to the point. Right? So here is an example to say, when the kernel process takes over, that is when in the default state. So this word default state is something need not be here, because here we are explaining the process, what happens. So these default states should be explained somewhere else. Okay? So you can write, when the kernel process takes over, one of its roles is to deliver a message. Simply, you can go as a flow through. You don't need to introduce the word default state here. So be simple, be clear to the point. And don't do nesting of sentences. Okay? Here, like in the first stage, the backtracking tokenizer. So, question now, backtracking tokenizer is part of the first stage or is it the first stage itself? So you can write like the first stage is the backtracking tokenizer. So I'm saying the first stage itself is the backtracking tokenizer. And look for if expressions, you know, fractured if expressions. 
like this. If the machine is largely loaded, the response time is acceptable whenever the data is on local disks. Why you want to split whenever the data, why not you combine lightly loaded with the data on local disk. So if the machine is lightly loaded and data is on local disk. Or you can rephrase it, you can say response time is acceptable when the machine is lightly loaded and data is on local disks. Or local disks. If you write long sentences, it's easy to write, but it's very difficult to read. Okay? You might have and, 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 and keep going. You can split them into two or three sentences by using full stops, okay? And then continue as a new sentence. So here is an example. The use of the responses, most of which were short, were collated, collated into the following table. Instead of saying like, we collated the responses from users which are usually stored into the following table. So we want to link things together, okay? And don't try to use double negatives. It will be very difficult. It is not a good practice not to come into your code. There is no reason not to adapt the new approach. So you can say the new approach is at least as good as the old one, for example. Okay? So you can simply change it appropriately. Then you can, you can think of these statements. The outcomes are not inconsistent. So what do you mean? Do you mean that outcomes do not contradict each other? Is that what you mean? Or you are saying they are consistent? Because you are using double negatives here. Okay? And don't try to make the technical writing like a rhyme, like a kind of sing-song, like a phrase which is like a rhyme. We propose that the principal procedure of proof be use of primary predicates. Classifying handles can involve opening the file they represent. So question is, Classifying handles means what? Do you mean by handles of classifying? So be clear, classification of handles. So instead of using ing, you can change them into a uh, action atiom of. So here is an example. The final line in the table shows that removing features. So instead of writing removing features, I can say removal of features. So if you say removing features, it means like there is something called as removing features, specific type of features. So instead, be clear by saying removal of features. So you can say developing tools. So you say development of tools. Always when you write, please ask these elementary questions. See, is the sentence as a motivation? Is there some relation to the previous sentence? Is it simple? It is clear to understand or not? What about the tense of writing? Most of your text will be in past or present tense. Present tense normally used to say, uh, for example, about some eternal truth. You will say the algorithm has asymptotic cost of so-and-so. You don't say had asymptotic, not in the past. Related issues are discussed below. This is how we write. You will not say will be discussed below. And past tense is used to describe the outcome. For example, you will say the ideas were tested by experiments. We did this test. So you will say in the past. You will not, you are not going to write like, Ideas are tested. You will not write in present tense format. Sometimes you mix present and past together. This is allowed. Okay. Although, theory suggests that Klein algorithm is an asymptotic cost of this. In our experiment, the trend observed was this. So you are mixing different tenses together. References are discussed either in past or present tense. Sometimes, um, even though present tense is what is preferred, past tense is forced because, you know, when you relate two, three papers together, you have this chance or you have this situation. Here is an example. Haast, in 1986, he postulated something, but Willard has since shown it is open. So he is mixing the past and the present tense together. While in the conclusion, you will write in future tense. What about repetition? Okay, if you keep repeating things, it will look like monotonous. It will make the reader sleepy. Okay, so don't start a sentence like few sentences using the same word. And be careful of these words like however, moreover, thereafter, therefore, hence, like this. Be careful. And don't use like first, comma, this, second, this, last, this. Don't write like this. Here is an example. Okay, and it is better to explain things in parallel. What do you mean by parallel here? Here is an example. In SMID, the same instructions are applied simultaneously to multiple data sets. Whereas in MMID, 
different data sets are processed with different instructions. So instead you can say multiple data sets are processed simultaneously by same instructions. In MMID, multiple data sets are processed by different instructions. So here they look parallel. Look, here it is multiple data sets, here it is multiple data sets. You don't need to be like, I should differentiate both sentences to look different. No, it's not necessary. If you put all your sentences similar starting starting, it might look boring, but does not mean you should not have any parallels. You can have parallels. Here is an example. Access is fast, but at the expense of slow update. So instead you can say access is fast, but update is slow. So they are like parallel, but they are explaining an antonym here. And if you don't put parallel structure, sometimes you end up in ambiguity. For example, here if you see performance gains are the results of tuning the lower level code used for data access and of improved design state. So here there is an off here you see, there is an off here, there is no off here. So to follow the same structure of tuning, you will say off improved, it is better, okay. And you can say on the first hand, first, second, third, instead of saying first, second, third, you can say firstly, secondly, you will see examples of this in the later slides. For real-time response, there should be sufficient memory, parallel disks should be used in fast processes. So you can simply combine them, real-time response requires this, okay. So the entity relationship is better method for developing schema. So if you write like this, what do you mean by better, better than what? What is the comparison you are giving to? Structure of a sentence focusing on a word can change. You can change the focus by arranging the word. Okay, this is important. A static model is appropriate because each item is written once. So you are saying is only written once. So you are emphasizing using a single word. Adding a single word can change the emphasis. emphasis. And if you put wrongly stress on some words, that can give ambiguity. For example, should I give emphasis on the response here or on the memory? Which one? Additional memory can lead to faster response. So am I emphasizing on memory or am I emphasizing on response? So depends on that, you should rephrase it. Fast response is possible with additional memory. So I'm emphasizing on the response here, not on the memory. You can also emphasize things by using italicized, but don't overdo it. Don't have too many italicized words. Right? And be careful when you want to use certainly, indeed, emphatic to say something is emphasized. Okay? You might understand something, the reader might understand it differently. And when you talk about acronyms or definitions, okay, some terminologies, you can use some kind of uh, emphasis on them, right? We use homogeneous sets. So if you just italicize the homogeneous, you are emphasizing the word homogeneous here. And you can also write like compaction in contrast to compression does not preserve information. That is, compacted data cannot be exactly restored, restored to the original form. So here, you are giving extra explanation, multiple explanation, so people can understand. Sometimes you need to give more examples or more explanation. It becomes necessary. Next part is about choice of words. How to choose a certain word over another, okay? This is important. You can use begin instead of initiate. Instead of saying first to second, you can say firstly and secondly. Instead of using component, you can use the word part. You can say the word use instead of utilize, okay? So the analysis derives information about software. If you say so, what do you mean by information? Remember, information has many meanings. It can mean many things, okay? So be clear. Analyze estimates the resource cost, right? So try to avoid ambiguities as much as possible. Sometimes people use these terms, important, intelligent, and paradigm, performance, difficult, hard, like this. But these things can be understood differently by different people because they have different meanings. So sometimes you do this. You take a word, you use it in different places, okay? You don't want to use it, so what you do, you replace the second occurrence of the same word with a different word. But that different word is not exact synonym of the first word. So you can simply use the same word for the second time. Here is an example. 
the database executes on a remote machine to provide better security for the system. Here he used the word system. He actually wants to say a database, but he used the word system. So you can replace the word system by the word database. There are some times that appear inconsistent. What do you mean by some times? So say some of the times or several of the times. Some words do change in, in, in the way of writing. People don't use the word data anymore. They use data for singular as well as plural. Automation, okay, is now used instead of automata in the singular case. And if you don't know a word, don't use it. Don't use words like while, amongst, notwithstanding. These are gone. Don't use any slang words. If you see some authors use a word different from, which could be replaced by in contrast to. Don't use can't, use cannot, okay. Don't make claims like that your work is an ideal solution or it is remarkable. These are not acceptable. Okay? Don't over qualify yourself. When you have qualifiers like might, may, perhaps, possibly, likely, livelihood and so on, use them only once in a sentence. Don't mix them too much. It is perhaps possible that the algorithm might fail. So you can say the algorithm might fail. Simply if you say might, it is clear. It, it also includes what do you want to say? Okay. It is possible that the algorithm would fail. You can write like this as well. If you are writing in your conclusion, don't say we are planning to. Okay. What do you mean by planning to consider? You are thinking now or what? So just say we are considering. We are thinking. Don't put planning to consider. Okay. Don't write like this. And obviously double negatives are also a form of a qualifier. Try to avoid qualifiers like very, quite, simply, totally, completely, certainly, and so on. You can, instead of saying this is a very little advantage or there is a very little advantage, you can say there is little advantage. Simple, little advantage. Don't use the words like simply, okay? You can just say standard method is too slow. You don't need to use the word simply. And you should try to avoid the phrases like the fact that, of course, in general, okay? And note that and that fact that they are not padding. They are not part of padding, right? And you should think of using a number of instead of several. Okay? You can you can you can replace several by a number of. Sorry, so be careful here. You can say a number of can be replaced by the word several. A large number can be replaced by many. So you can simply use a short word. Don't use words that look longer. Instead of saying it is frequently the case that you can say often. Right. Example, a well-known method such as this is a potential practical alternative in instance of this kind. Instead, you can say a method such as quicksort it poten is a potential alternative. Be clear, be simple. And there are some words which are misused, like when to use which, when to use that. So, Use which only when you cannot replace it with the that, okay? Only when you cannot change it with the that, use which. So you can say like, there is one method that is acceptable. There are three options of which only one is traceable. You cannot change this which with that. So you can say there are three options of which, right? And then remove the word there. If you remove the word there, for example, and then it does not change the meaning, it does not affect, just remove the word. You don't need a word there, there. Some of us have this habit of putting that many places and use the word less for something which is continuous. Something which is discrete, use the word fewer, okay? There were fewer errors because error is discrete. About space is continuous, okay? Every small bit is a space. So you can say it uses, it used less space. So here are uh, some, the table which says what to use and so on. So flammable, inflammable, now they both mean the same. So there's no difference. It used to be opposite before. Now they are the same. Affect means something that is causing an effect. And effect means consequence. What is the outcome, kind of. Alternate means being alternate between one and the other. Alternative, you have some things available, okay? One or any set of others that can be chosen. You can choose something, okay? So if you have only one alternative, there is no choice. Simply you can have only one alternative. In that situation, there is no choice. So you cannot say alternative and a choice are the same.
choice means I should have more than one alternative so I can choose from. Okay? And then assume means I'm assuming as of now it is true. Presume means I am taking it as granted. I say yes, it is it's, it's, it's like this. You, you can use the word may if you want to give it as a personal choice. Right? And might or can, this means your ability, you can do it. Users can access this facility, so means they can, but may not wish to do so. This may not say it is personal interest, personal choice. When you say something is basic, it means it is elementary and fundamental is different. And when you say something is sophisticated, it is not something new or novel, but it is an advanced one. It is next, maybe complex one, for example. Shell is rarely preferred to will, okay. You can simply remove both of them. Most of the time you can remove will and shell. When you talk about compile means you are assembling, collecting, gathering something. Compose means you are inventing something, right. When you say composed, that means it is made up of, something is made up of something. So when you use the word conflict, it means things which are distinct things are similar. You consider them as similar. Merge means you are combining them to form something new. Continual means it will not stop. Continuous means there is no broke, no no broken, it's unbroken. Conversely means opposite, similar means parallel, okay, likewise is also parallel. But please avoid the word like inversely because inversely has different meanings. Fast means quick, but when you say quickly means it is fast but not in the near future. It can take some time some more time. When you say presently, it means soon. Timely, something that happens in a timely manner. Timely does not mean it should be fast. Does not mean it is rapid. Okay. You can use the word currently means at present. So, if you want to say present, you say currently. If you want to say very near future, soon, you can say presently. You want to do faster, quick, you can say fast. You want to do faster but not in the near future, then you say quickly and so on. If you use the opti optimize, meaning you are like getting the optimum or the best solution, okay. Uh, sometimes people use the word optimize to indicate improve, okay. It is also possible. When you say overlook, it means ignore them. Oversee, you manage them. Oversight means both. You manage as well as you are noticing them or you fail to notice, you ignore all things together. When you say preposition, something you are testing. Supposition means you are assuming something. but these words differ between disciplines. So, depending upon your discipline, you should choose the words appropriately. And cleave means divide and adhere. Sanction means you allow and you penalize. Okay, so here is the table which gives you misused words. Instead of using alternative, people use alternate and so on. We have seen the differences in the previous slides. Misspelled words, words which are spelled wrongly. And there is difference between UK spelling, US spelling, okay. Depend upon the journal or the venue you are writing your uh, paper, choose appropriately, okay. Whether to use OR or OUR at the end, whether to use center, TRE or TER, catalog, like this, right. And please be careful with jargons. Jargons are those words which are used by people who are in that domain or in that discipline. And it has meaning for them. So some would say CPU, right? CPU means a part of the computer that really executes instructions. But it is good to avoid them because people might mean differently. But if you are using it, be consistent in the meaning with which you are using. But right? here is an example. The transaction log is a record of changes. So remember, record is part of a database. So people might misunderstand this record as part of the database. So instead you could say history of changes, okay. Hughes describes an array of algorithms. Remember array of algorithms, are you meaning several algorithms? Because array has a different meaning when it comes to list. So be careful when you use this kind of terms. And when you use some kind of idioms or glitch, be careful. So for example, we use follow suit, go through with a fine tooth, comb, like this, they have different meanings. So avoid them as much as possible in your scientific writing, okay. As a matter of fact, in the final analysis, not a problem, best question, these are things which people use but should be avoided as much as you can. 
and don't try to use phrases from different languages or foreign words like mutates melendes and so on okay these words you don't need to if ever you are using some words which don't which use latin characters like this okay like double dot above e use as double dot above e don't make it as a normal e okay don't change it and don't overuse words don't use too many words like here is an example okay ada was used for this project because the underlying operating system is implemented in ada instead you can say because it is a language used for implementation for the underlying operation what is important for us is data the language not the operating system okay you have to be clear then and repetition right if you can eliminate right you can eliminate it for example if two things mean the same thing initially said it could be replaced by the word initialized they are the same thing okay so you can replace it and be careful of these words like this very case and some of these ticks like hence thus be careful for example if i write discrete quantities and continuous quantities can i write as discrete and continuous quantities okay if i do it it might be ambiguous for somebody to understand for example long lists and long arrays if i say like long lists and arrays so it is unclear now are the arrays long or short it's not clear it becomes ambiguous so don't just delete adjectives and make sure they are short no don't do this here is a list of words which you can replace these long words into small ones instead of saying completely optimized just use the word optimized at a faster rate you can use the word quickly completely unique you just say unique whether or not you can say whether okay instead of saying cooperate together you can just use the word cooperate because they all mean the same stuff so here is a list which you can get familiarized with and use them appropriately what about plural there are some things which are becoming uncommon now okay formulas instead of formulae indexes okay instead of indices so if you want to write a parser checks syntax compiler checks program check compilers check programs this is fine but if you say the instruction is here is a problem with the plural the set of first few matches are remember here we are referring to the set not the first few matches So it should be the set of first few matches is range of numbers is referred. So not are easy is easy, and don't use excessive plural. Like for example, packets are not contain that contain an error or automatically corrected. So I can simply make I can say a packet that contains an error is automatically corrected. Any packet that has error be corrected automatically. These kinds of algorithms are irrelevant. okay so you don't need to say kinds of algorithms so if you say these kind of algorithms so kinds of algorithms so this is what i'm referring now kinds it becomes as a plural so you say of or simply you can say algorithms of this kind are irrelevant simply because of this plural algorithms you have the word of okay so sometimes you you cannot add change things you cannot say matrices is not yet matrices okay so this depends on your writing style or even it sometimes go through uk style us style and so on and if you use abbreviation some non native speakers find it difficult don't use the words like first 1st 2nd or don't use fig dot algorithm dot alg dot you can use them if the publication the journal says use like this then you can use no problem uh try to avoid etc don't write like there is etc dot 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 like this okay when you are you have ellipses which is basically three dots you should put them in quotes or put them in brackets according to the place where you are writing so you can say methods like include this and this okay methods available or this and then extra so means you are more you are not aware of some of this or what so be clear by removing the etc you don't need it don't use the slash like and r space because when you use this slash you are not sure whether you are seeing you are saying or meaning either or both or either but not both or also you don't know this is not obvious then okay avoid slash when you talk about acronyms when you have the acronym for the very first time very first time expand them explain them okay 
So there are some acronyms which mean differently. WWW, it is usually meaning the web. When you say the local LAN network, it is not same as LAN, okay? And CPU, you can write CPU, you can use C.P.U, acceptable, but not like this. Not just one dot at the end, okay? So um, don't just make mess out of it. And then when you talk about writing referring to gender, right? Instead of referring to any specific gender, he or she, just put they, okay? Be generic or change it. A user who makes a mistake may be disconnected, right? Don't use something like S slash E, right? Don't make this looks very ugly according to the author, right? And when you talk about use passive voice, so don't use passive voice, go with active voice, it is more clear, more direct. Again, as we have emphasized this before, some parts of the world like active, some like passive, okay? And when you want to say what is your contribution, using the word we, which is active, makes it more direct, more clear. So, in summary, here are some guidelines we have seen. You got to follow these guidelines in different parts of your writing skills. And this will make our writing better. So, how to use them? Yes, there are lots of rules, but how to use them? Write. First of all, take a paper, summarize them, or write your own paper in your own way. Don't bother about these things first. Because what we need is the context first, the stuff, the content. Then use these things, like a cheat sheet, for example, and then correct them. Go one round, one revision, then second revision, then third, like this. So at the first instance, you will not be becoming a very good writer immediately. Okay? You will slowly change. The difference between a good writer and a not so good writer is the good writer does lots of revisions. The not so good writer writes once and then forgets it. Or writes once and just reads once more. That's it. I hope this is clear. I will end the session now.